What's happening? This is Fieldy from Corn. I want to talk to you about the Ibanez K5 and White. I remember when I first came across the Soundgear bass, I was in a music store. There was a bunch of basses on the wall. And for some reason, it was just the look of it. It was smaller. And I was like, I want something smaller because at the time, I was like, I can go faster on it, you know, something smaller like a guitar. In the original beginning, I was a guitar player. So when I picked it up, I was like, wow, this is way better because the neck was small and everything about it. And I just wanted to be able to move faster and be able to do more tricks and all that. And then I picked it up, played it in the store. And then I was like, why does it sound so like clicky, you know? And they told me it had a battery in the back. I'm like, what's that for? They said active pickups. That's where they're getting the sound in it. And it sold me right there. This was in Bakersfield when I first spotted a sound gear in a store called Front Porch Music, which is still there today. Years and years later, we started playing down in Hollywood a little bit, and there was a buzz going around about this band Corn, which was us, and some people from Ibanez came down. They asked me if I wanted an endorsement. For us back then, we were poor. We were just like, let's take it. So that's what kind of just sold me, because I already liked the bass. I put the K5 right here, which is, stands for Corn 5-string. Threw the signature up here. Left everything the way it was as time went on. And we're playing big sold out arenas and things started blowing out. We're playing up there and I noticed like when I'm playing, my fingers are slipping on the paint. So I was scraping the paint off. And I was like, can't you guys just make me like a wood base? You know, wood where it's paint, like black wood paint. And then pulling that off. And it was like better that my hand wasn't slipping all over the paint. I changed a couple of things here and there. And over the years, it started developing into more signature bass. I wanted to do a white bass, but I didn't like the way the regular white basses look with the wood neck. I've seen a lot of bands play it and just, I didn't like the way it looked. I'm like, I wanted to make the neck white. I was talking to this guy, Mike Taft, over at Ibanez. We are going through some ideas and he's like, but it's gonna absorb and we're just having problems with the paint stain on the fretboard. So he tried out a maple wood neck and it didn't absorb and it just held it right. And it just kind of worked. That's why the space looks so unique is because of that. These right here, they're not going to be on the signatures, it's going to be a clean neck. I put stickers on there, the X and O. You know, we use the uh, ADX5 pickups, which are the ones that always use. That's what I like about, you know, Ibanez always consistent, staying the same, you know, over the years. I like that about it. I don't want something new. That's what I like is this bass. This is all the same as back in from the early days. All the knobs are the same. It's a simplicity about it I like. I started messing around with this bass live a little bit and for some reason everybody flips out on this bass. Jaw dropping flip out. What's so different? Why does this bass pop? It's because the neck's white and the body's white. So it really just has something unique about it. That it really catches somebody's eye. We're doing a special limited run of this white bass right here because it's a you know 20 year anniversary type deal for corn and with head coming back and just everything seems to be making full circle so we wanted to do something special and to me this is probably one of the most special unique bases that we've ever done this is going to be the one so make sure you get one of these because it's very limited